Hello everyone, it's Rebecca from Silver Cottage. We're a flower farm in, here in Leeds, West Yorkshire. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, number one, so that you can get copies of everything that we do. Some of it's a bit quirky, some of it's a bit fun, but generally speaking, it's about growing a flower farm. So we grow about, well, last year we grew 80,000 stems. This year we're aiming for way more than that. And it's an exciting time. So we've been cutting for about five weeks and I think one of the key things to know about flower farming is that you don't just sow some seeds once and then you're done with it. I've been sowing seeds since January and we are now at the beginning of April and I will still be sowing in May. So it is a long journey and then you've got a couple of months off and then you start again. You really do have to love this because some of it is repetitive. Okay, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And if the advice or the information in here is helpful, please, please, please buy me a coffee. Speaking of which, if there's somebody called Penny watching, I need to say a massive thank you to you for buying us several coffees. Irritatingly and sadly, Mr. Land of Buy Me A Coffee won't let me reply to your message. So I'm saying a personal thank you now for supporting my caffeinated world. We really genuinely do appreciate it. Thank you. Now, I, if you go back through the archive, you'll see that I haven't once done a plain video on seed sowing. It's not my kind of thing because it's visible in lots of places, because it's really not that challenging. There are some things that you need to know the knack and how to do them, but that's information you can find in books, other places on YouTube, Google, and that sort of thing. However, today, I'm feeling super, super blessed because I have been sent some packets of floret seeds. Now, if you are in the States, you're going to say, so what? We've got those too. But I'm not in the States. I'm in the United Kingdom. And as yet, these are not on sale. So how have I got a copy of them or got a set of them? And do you know what? I feel so lucky. I'm really excited about them. And I'll talk to you about the excited in just a second. But first of all, a massive thank you. First of all, to Florette Flowers for sending them to my friend, Jane. Jane Lindsay, who is Snapdragon Life. She's also here on YouTube and I'm going to put a link to her YouTube page in the bits below. Please watch, please subscribe. She's really lovely. And if it's within your gift, I wholly suggest that you join her club. It's a lot of fun. All right. So, Jane, Jane is way more famous than me. I am not famous. I'm just a lowly flower farmer in Yorkshire who loves what she does. But Jane is pretty famous and Florette Flowers sent her a load of seeds, in fact, a full set, along with a few other farmers in the UK. So historically, we've not been able to get hold of Florette seeds because of all of the importation rules and regulations. So Jane received these with a full set of bits of paper and certificates, making it okay. And I understand that there's plans for the future, but they're not plans that I'm privy to at the moment. What I do know is that it is legal. I have these legally. Jane very kindly contacted me and said, look, I don't grow as much as I used to, and I don't want the seeds to go to waste. Would you like them? And I said, yes! Yes! Of course I'd like some. So I think you have to ask the question, why do I, a UK flower farmer, want to have a go with these seeds? Because they have obviously been beautifully collated by Florette and the colours are stunning. But they've also been grown and created in a completely different climate. So there's a real risk that these aren't going to work for us. But I still want to try because look at these colours. Look at these colours. They're like the most beautiful ranges of colours in the history of the Zinnia world. So I'm going to give them a go. I'm going to save them in the usual way. Um, and I will obviously keep you posted. Like I said, it's rare of me to talk seed sowing, but I'm going to do it today because I've got these. 
Okay, so I know that there are loads of growers out there with beautiful greenhouses and tunnels and wonderful clear spaces that they do their beautiful seed sowing in. I'm afraid I'm not one of them, so I'm not showing you around my workshop because my workshop is a mess with the exception of one area behind me, which is the photography area. That's the only place that's tidy and probably health and safety positive. It's clean, like the floors are clean, the surfaces are clean, but there is a lot of stuff in here. So this is all about the seed sowing. We are at the beginning of April in 2024. So it's first week of April, we've just had Easter. And I have actually already done my first round of half hardies. So these are zinnias and solosia. Solosia and zinnias constitute half hardies along with things like calistephus, um, and cosmos, uh, those are the kind of most common ones that we grow. And then there's things like the discus that sit somewhere in the middle. And then we also sow our tagetes and coreopsis in the same way that we sow our half hardy. So we start them a bit later, so end of March, beginning of April. Why? Well, they're not frost hardy. So whilst I could sow them in January and February, and they would sow and they would on, on the germinating mats they would they would germinate just fine they would start growing but i would then have to look after them in our greenhouse until i was confident that i could put them outside and they weren't going to get frosted frozen and killed now we plant everything outside because we're in yorkshire under envira mesh so actually there's a pretty low risk of frost damage but our last frost is somewhere in the middle of april usually so the key thing to know about half hardies is that you need to sow them later so that you plant them out later so that there's less risk of frost and so there's more chances of successful growing. Okay. That, that's the long and short of it. So I'm sowing these now. I've sown a set already. They're not going to be ready for planting out for another two to three weeks. Two weeks. And so that will be just perfect. These, I'm going to say now, they'll be ready to go out in kind of end of April, beginning of May. So completely safe. So this is a good time to be doing, doing it. Is it anything special? Well, no, not really. Most of our sowing at this time of the year, I try and do straight into trays. So I fill the tray with compost. I've tapped it down. I will put the seeds on top. I'll soak them in water. Um, and press my seeds down into it to make sure that they're definitely in contact with moist soil and then sprinkle a bit of vermiculite on top that's it they'll sit on the heat mat zinnias half hardies don't take very long to germinate so you know three to five days is what we're aiming for and these have come with really clear instructions that say three to five days so we'll see how good they are i am not going to talk you through every day of their lives but i promise you if we're successful growing them i will share it with you do I get this excited about all seeds? Yeah, I do. Do I share them all? No, I don't. But these, thank you so much to Snapdragon Life and thank you so much to Follette for sharing them with her. Okay, so there will be some of you out there thinking, Rebecca, you're utterly nuts. And I am, I'm growing flowers in Yorkshire. But utterly nuts having sown some of these half hardy seeds already. My response to you is this. The key thing that says on the back of all the packets is so four to six weeks before your last frost. So because I know that my last frost is in the middle of April, I say them at the beginning of March. That's not silly. That's perfectly sensible. The second thing for me is that I've been caught out. So because they germinate quicker, because they grow quicker, I've always assumed that they would be easier or more predictable than the hardy annuals that take their merry good sweet old time and so with the exception of cosmos and aranthus all of our other half hardies have always been a little bit hit and miss so this year our records are pristine in my flower farmers planner and this year i am making sure that i have my succession sown and that i'm sowing in plentiful numbers and Using those records, I'll make decisions on how early I sow next year, how often I sow next year, and then, of course, which varieties I grow again. I wonder if I'll be sowing these again. So, in the interest of full disclosure, um, that was the light on our propagator just going off, so hopefully you can still see me. In the interest of full disclosure, I have actually bought a ton of zinnia seeds this year. 
And that's because I am desperate to have more than a handful. And um, so zinnia are beautiful, they're really fun. They're in that kind of time zone of Delia, a nice kind of contrast in size. And they're also really prolific. So it's a flower that I am determined to master this year. In the past, we've had her handfuls and bucketfuls, but not tons and tons of them. And I know they're super popular with our florists and they're really popular with our retail customers too. So I have bought zinnia seeds from all over the place. And because I don't want to seem like just pure favourite of florette seeds, which, you know, I can't lie to you, are gorgeous colours and beautifully packaged. And I'm not usually one for a package, but these really are beautiful packaging in terms of picture, in terms of colour and in terms of the feel of the envelope. That really is not something that I would normally say, but even I have fallen for these, um, which is saying something. Okay, so I've also bought them from mole seeds, Chilson seeds and plants of distinction. So full disclosure, I'm not just sowing florette seeds, and I'm not just doing zinnias, because I've been given these wonderful, wonderful um, zinnias um, from Snapdragon Life. Well, from Florette via Snapdragon Life. Yeah, I am quite excited. I'm also going to put another light on because sewing in this sort of light is bad for my eyes and they're already pretty rubbish. So some of you might be wondering why, given that I don't really talk much about what we're sewing when we're sewing it and all those sorts of things, why I am harping on still, about zinnia and no it's not just because i got those seeds from florette um it is because for me zinnia sit in a very similar category to ranunculus and dahlia and roses so they're they're focal flowers and they're also flowers that you can use to kind of paint or or kind of flex and stretch the colour that you're using or the main colour palette for your florist with. So they're focal sort of size, though we are showing a mixture of sizes. They come in larger ones and small ones. This is nice too. They're nice and round, so they, they take up a nice amount of space in a bouquet, whether that is a gift bouquet or a bridal bouquet. They come in a range of colours. So because you can use them as a focal and because they come in a range of colours, you can then use them to blend. So white, always popular in various sizes and shapes. I need plenty of white. The common colour, though we've got lots of hot pinks and oranges this year, is blush and pale pinks. And it's actually quite hard to grab a lot of those colours without them looking quite bland. So if you just give one or two varieties in that shade, it's quite a flat colour palette to me. And what I want to offer our florists is interest and intrigue, both in the colours and the shapes and the sizes and the textures that they can create with the flowers that I grow. So for me, in the same way that we grow 9, 10, 11 species of dahlia, I want to know that I've got enough varieties of zinnia to be able to complement those, to be able to add to those, and to be able to give our customers choice. Because it's that choice and that flexibility of how they want to create their, their flowers that really makes the work kind of exciting, rather than just using the same flowers over and over again. So that's why I'm going in big, big, big on zinnias this year. Now, I'm growing in Yorkshire. We don't have a tunnel. We don't have a big tunnel, we've got a tiny tunnel in the garden, um, but we don't have a big tunnel or a high tunnel as you call them in the States. Um, but, so zinnias are a gamble. Dahlia actually don't like it super hot. So dahlia is the other focal that we will have at that, at that time of the year. And so they're very well suited to the UK because a little bit of shade, a little bit of water, they're actually quite happy with just the warmth, but without that kind of penetrating heat. Whereas I know that zinnias need sunshine and heat. Now where we grow, we're very exposed. So when it's hot, it is incredibly hot. So Gemma and I start cutting super early because there's no shade, there's no respite once the sun is up. So I'm not too worried about that so long as we have a nice hot summer. If we don't have a hot summer, I'm not sure that these are gonna do that well. I'll still have my dahlia, it'll be okay. Okay, so 
I am going to stop talking at you very soon because I've almost finished sewing the zinnias. I am sewing three, four trays of zinnias today, so that's 400 seedlings that I hope to get. Now, you don't always get every single seed germinate, so that's why I'm doing so many. Um, and I guess the final thing to say in this is two things. One is just to note the importance of colour because it's not so simple as I'm gonna throw every colour in the sun under the ground. I really am thinking about the colours that I grow. So anybody who knows me well will know that actually for lots of things, I will grow one, maybe two colours. I, re I really rationalise what we grow. I grow the useful colours or shades. I don't grow every single colour under the sun because that's just not productive and it's difficult to keep up with. So for me to sew more than one colour, it A must mean that something's important and B must mean that I intend to use and to blend those colours together. So that is the first thing to say. The second thing to say is that there are very few things, again, if you know me well, that get past the three year mark. Ranunculus was on that list. And by the three year mark, I mean the test of if I don't grow it well, the first year and the second year, on the third year, things really are a bit being read the riot act. So if they don't do well in that third year, I'm unlikely to sow them again, and I will most definitely um, be looking for a viable alternative. But when it comes to focals, um, for me, it's really important that I master some key groups, and zinnias are amongst those key groups, and we've got better and better each year, and this year I'm hoping that we're going to be like way up there so that's two things one color two deciding about which crops are really important to master and which ones you can find an alternative for now the third one is actually the second one but i forgot what i was going to say i forgot because it's something that i think about a lot and i guess it went in one ear and out the other or something like that. Anyway, the third one is that flower farming is actually more difficult than it looks. It is not so simple as you buy a few packets of seeds, you sow them, you grow them, you sell them. An awful lot of thought and prior planning goes into a curated collection of flowers that started for us at the back end of February and will go all the way through till early November. That is a long time to grow flowers. Anybody can sow seeds and grow flowers in August. I would question whether that makes you a flower farmer if that's what you're doing. July, August, easy. February, March, April, May, challenging. September, October, November. In the UK, flipping difficult, especially when you don't have a tunnel, okay? So for those of you out there who are wanting to know more, wanting to grow more, this is one place to find us. Another place to find me is on our podcast, which is called Mulch, and that goes out every Monday. I've only missed one this year, and that was this week, because it's Easter Monday, which is super important to me. And on Instagram, we're at Silver Grey Foliage Flower Farm, and I talk a bit on there. We have a newsletter, it doesn't go out too, too often. We do courses in January and there is a flagship course coming up in August this year. It's not advertised yet, it will be soon. My name's Rebecca, this is Silver Grey Foliage and if you haven't already, please subscribe and please buy me a coffee.